Hey, good people. There's this app, which I think is quite interesting, and I kind of have a feeling that not so many people know about it. The app is called Enhancor AI, and I probably wouldn't have heard about it either if I were following the guy who created it on LinkedIn. His name is Sirio Verratti, and I think he's come up with a simple yet brilliant idea. I wish I had done that. The app serves one single purpose, which is to fix AI-generated plastic and skin. You might object like, wait a second, these new image generation models like ChatGPT Image 1 actually handle realistic skin pretty well out of the box, so why do we need some extra tool for that? And you would be right, to an extent. I personally, in the course of the last few weeks, did a couple of commercial projects for which I used ChatGPT as a primary image generation tool, and uh, I didn't have to launch Coffee at once. And that was fun, but that doesn't work 100% of the time. Sometimes there is just not enough consistency. For example, look at this image. Uh, while it recreates the composition and the overall look successfully, this is obviously not me. This is some guy who I might be mistaken for by someone who doesn't know me well. It would have been close enough if I were creating a Ghibli version of myself or a plastic toy, but if you're working on a commercial project and aim for precision and consistency, that is simply not enough. So a lot of times you still have to fire up ConfUI and do the dirty work with Flux. And there are kind of the plastic skin. There's really nothing that you can't fix with ConfUI, and I'm pretty sure that Enhancer has ConfUI backend under the hood anyway. But it's usually very time consuming and labor intensive. And also, Confia workflows for skin refinement and detailing are usually monstrous, and there's no unified workflow, at least that I know about, that would work for all kinds of shots. So, usually, you have to approach each case individually and spend a lot of time combining various workflows and figuring out which works better for each kind of shot. Meantime, the images that I'm seeing online coming out of my hanker are very, very impressive. Look at the skin. The level of detail, the variance in the skin tone, the imperfections, the correct reflectivity of the skin. This is an incredible level of fidelity in my opinion. But we remember rule number one, don't we? Never ever trust cherry-picked images and always do the testing yourself before we jump to conclusions. So let's see what it's really capable of. The app's interface is very simple as you can see. Yet with a decent amount of control. There are basically two sliders, one for skin texture adjustment and the other for skin realism level. Additionally, there is a bunch of switches that allow you to keep certain areas unchanged, which is super useful. One thing I don't appreciate is that with a minimal subscription, which I bought for testing purposes, it doesn't let you move the skin texture slider beyond a certain point. I assume that this whole range to the right from point 33 may not be very useful anyway, um, unless you're aiming for dragon skin or whatnot. But unfortunately, we won't know. Despite the simplicity of controls, uh, achieving the desired result is oftentimes tricky. Well, not surprisingly, because like I said before, different types of shots require different approaches, and creating a universal workflow that works across all types of shots is not easy. To put it to the test, I picked my profile picture, which I generated a while ago when I was just learning how to train Flux Loris, and I figured it would work well for the test because the skin here isn't terrible, but it's also far from perfect. It's got some skin tone variation and some detail, but the reflectivity of the skin isn't natural. It's way too glossy. So let's see what Enhancor can do for us here. Now, that's definitely more realistic, but I don't look very healthy here for sure. Well, let's go down with the texture slider, say to 0.32. By the way, I have noticed a weird discrepancy between the recommended values for the texture slider and the actual value range. Um, it's kind of weird, but they'll probably fix it. Still some weirdness. A bump on the forehead and the bristle looks patchy all of a sudden. Let's go all the way down. While that looks more subtle, there are some artifacts and also, since in the original image the left eye was a little scrambled, I left the bypass switch for the eyes off, hoping that it will fix them too. And as you can see on the first image, the one with the exaggerated skin texture, it fixed the eye quite well, while on the last image, with the lowest skin texture adjustment value, the eye has remained practically unchanged. So I reckon this slider changes the strength of all parameters at once. Of course, you can fix it in Photoshop by combining different areas from different passes, which I will probably do anyway, because none of the results so far is 100% perfect. But I think it would have been nice to have separate controls, at least for the skin and for the eyes. Now, let's go nuts with the second slider and see what it does. Okay, wow. Apparently, it's adding noise. So I figure the first slider is using some coffee eye face detailer notes, while the second slider is mixing in some noise to add some skin tone variation and some perceived bumpiness of the skin. Cool, cool, cool. Well, after a little bit of experimenting, I found the parameters that work best for this type of portrait. I kept skin texture at maximum and then nudged the skin realism level down a little. I think it's almost perfect, apart from the left eye, which I will fix in Photoshop later using one of the first generations. Now, let's see how it handles really very plastic skin. I guess for this one, we'll need to nudge the noise slider up significantly. Well, holy crap, this is unexpectedly good. I may have even gone a little too far with the noise level, but that really depends on the level of fidelity you're aiming for. I've run a bunch of other tests too, and most of the results left me quite happy. Well, what can I say? My overall impression of Enhancer is very good. I think it's solid. Like I said before, there's nothing you can't achieve with ConfUI, but for all good lazy people out there, I actually think this app is a gem. I must confess, I kinda like taming gnarly ConfUI workflows, as it makes me feel very smart, but 
First of all, it's not for everyone. And secondly, when I work on a client project, especially with the pressing deadlines, feeling smart is not exactly what I need. What I need is speed and efficiency. So I will probably be using Anchor occasionally myself. Well done, Serio. And good luck with the app. Mm -hmm.